Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, mm. Stanley. All right, coming in with this week's Power Review Monster. Monster. Before we get into it, let's give a major shout out to Woody the Great. Yeah, Woody my... the Great came through, who is Kane on Power, came yes. through the channel last week, gave us much love and much support. He tweet, um, not tweeted, but he featured us on his Insta story. So I was like, you know what? You got me now. Yeah, you man. Now. We appreciate it, too. <laughs> no, we not really, really appreciate it. Look, that. not really, because you'll feature me this week, and I'll talk skit about you today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but That's how it works over here. If y'all wonder what's going on with my hair, y'all need to be following us over on our um, lifestyle vlogs. Life With Us TV. Yes, my hair yeah. is locked. Yeah. Hope. I don't want to talk about it because she's going to drive, me, drive me crazy with it, Mike. But any hoodles, um, if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe mm. button. It's free for right now. But, you know, yeah. we only giving it to you free this year because we don't had a hard year with COVID and everything. But next year, sure, this keep going, going back up. up. Yeah, Mike. If you're not new and you come back every time we do an upload, we appreciate y'all. And y'all know what to do. You can thumbs up or you can thumbs down at this point. It don't even matter. Yeah. You've already been counted. But exactly. let me go ahead and give a shout out to somebody on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm like, why are we getting new comments on random TV reviews? Because, you know, when you first put a video up, you get an explosion and yeah. it tapers off. I'm like, we've been getting hits today. <laughs> we had Joshua Potts come through was like, listen. 901, uh, busy oh, or not. We need that review. Don't nope. even care. I need to be sitting in that chair. Y'all will get it early because we're sitting here early. We got a few more people. Um, Yolanda Odom was like, listen, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and comment. I'm not going to wait for the new review. <laughs> I was like, what well, dang. So since y'all ready for it, here, here it is. Go. God darn monster. I'm going to say that this episode was a good episode this tonight, today, whatever. But it was more... To me, it wasn't as good as last week's episode. Nice. Okay? Because last week's episode, it kind of had me on the edge of the chair like, what's going on? I'm kicking the camera. That's all uh -huh. right. The episode had me like, God, darn, what's going to happen? This but this week, it had a few, uh, you know, scenes that was like that. But I'm starting to not trust your judgment. Hey, that's all right. I, I got I to gotta tell it from my perspective. Right? All right. I'm going to tell it from mine. <laughs> mm. So we see this week, it starts off with Kane and Lil Wop is getting rid of the fellas that they killed. And which, from Little Wop's standpoint, Kane done pumped you so bad it got you cutting up your boys that and you putting them in the barrel that you've been rolling with. Y'all be lawyers like you got. So, so they got done. Kane is a lot more bad than we thought. Because I don't know. He's just crazy. I man. don't know if I could actually cut my boys up like that. Nah. Even though I don't have a lot of boys in my life right now. But the ones that I'm tight with, loyal with. I can't see me cutting them up like that, man. No. But that just that just me. So this episode, I forgot that uh, Paula, and I always want to call her Paula Patton. So Please I got I gotta make sure I don't no. do that. But Paula finds out that McLean has been lying to her, and I don't know why she wouldn't think that he That's would do like. that. Yeah. Because you the side chick, man. So why should he be why honest with you? For you? Yeah. So I'm like, he already getting the draw, so why 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 wouldn't he treat you like the side chick? And that's what I understand is side chicks get mad when they not being treated like the main chick, but you already know your position before you get in, you second. So like Ray Charles said, you knew the rules before you got in. Yeah, this. and I'm like, he freaking lying to his wife sleeping behind you. So why sleeping with you? Yeah, sleeping with you. So why? Why would, is he so loyal to why you? Why would he be loyal to you? But we'll we'll come back and we'll talk some more about that in a minute. But we see Zeke and Professor, and I, I know I've been calling her Ingram. It's Milgram. That's me. I mess up names. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm country, so I'm a jack of names up. It's thick. <laughs> yeah, so. Professor Mirgum, they st we see that they are still sleeping together. So, of course, she see the bruises on him is like, I need you to tell me what happened. And he like, no, I can't, you know, I can't tell you, you know. So, finally, she was like, well, I'm putting my whole career on the line for you. At least you can tell me what happened. So, he began to tell her. He was what, singing. Yeah, that he was at the club. They having a good time. Left out the club. The, the dude acted like he wanted to take a picture, but he actually wanted to jump him. So he got jumped, and he was telling them how the guy almost blew his knee off, was going to mess up everything for him. And so now, Professor Milgram is like, we need to call the cops. 
Zeke was like, oh, no. hell no. These GTG boys, they ain't the people you call the cops on. So we was thinking that he didn't know a lot about the business, but he do know enough, he know about, enough. about them that you ain't supposed to call the cops on them. So I'm like, what else do Zeke really know? Is he that far removed from the business? When he start, yeah. you know, he know a name, so maybe he not as far removed as we thought. I mean, if you really want to think about it, like, we not in no kind of game. But we know some people that's moving and shaking. Yeah. So that's the same thing with him. Like, that's his family. He may not know how you do it and what exactly it is that you are doing. Yeah. But I know that this circle right here got an outer circle and this outer circle ain't to be bucked with. And, and I can name them in a lot of it if I really needed to. <laughs> so it's the same thing, in my opinion. Gotcha. So, yeah, so as we're going to see, this is going to kind of cause a, a little kerfuffle uh, with that. But we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to that as well. So now we got a detective. I can't think of the guy's name. Um, he playing so many movies, but y'all, y'all seen it. Oh, the detective. Yeah. He came down to the college that we need to, you know, answer questions about the dude being dead in the pool. We just saw him on um this Christmas. <laughs> yep, so did. So of course the uh, other dude, um, the other white guy. I can't think of his name right now, but y'all know he is. Uh, he was like, "Ain't no way that no student or staff at this school." kill nobody at the pool and of course he was like you can't rule out of that but what pissing me off about black cops the first thing he said was we need to interview all the people that have a light background as a suspect and i like that uh professor uh can you think his name this week oh um uh, jabari. jabari was like ain't you learned anything this summer that every time something go down we have to make, you know, turn it into a racial issue that why we got to figure it had to be somebody that was black or in some type of gang affiliation to kill it. Because it could have been anybody that killed them. So I do agree with that, that every time something does go down like that, that we get pulled in. And I know what y'all are telling me. It is us. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm just going to shut up. I know it is us, but it's a shame that it's always, we always, it's not always us. But it is us sometimes. That's the mind puck. <laughs> <laughs> I get ready to say. <laughs> Birds of a feather flock together. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to get into that whole thing. But yeah. I get what you're saying. We can't always racially profile. Right. But history has shown that certain crimes against certain people. And they usually happen with people that are in the same arena. That move, walk, shape, and look the same. That's just real talk. Yeah. So we can't get too sensitive. Oh, I can get sensitive. <laughs> about history keep repeating itself. But because of that, we get innocently, well. I get that. I get Say that. stuff about us that are not 100% true that you make us think the stereotype is if there's something gang related and somebody gets killed, it's it has to be black. And it's yeah. not always that. Oh, I get that. Yeah. That's the that's the point that, that Professor Jabbar was making. So we see uh, Tariq meets up with Monet to get his Nick's product pickup, but she don't have the regular products. She got cocaine. I can say, here we go. We just got the cocaine. He can't get away from it if he wanted to. So he was like, this ain't my junk. You know, what's, what's up? She was like, this is the best I can do. And Tariq was like, well, it's a little bit hot over Stansfield now because of that pool shooting. Um, and yeah, we shouldn't be doing nothing right now. Pool death. Yeah, pool death. So she was like, well, you said nobody knows about course correct, so we should be good. But I was like, Monet, the cops is investigating down at the school. So Product still being moved. Yeah, so you know that they gonna somebody's gonna whistle. That's what I see. So I'm like, why? But at this point, she is desperate. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, she has to rid of the product yeah. to make sure that the boy's death doesn't link back to them. Yeah. So then he's not moving his normal way. He's moving, he moving, he moving cocaine. Coke that came off of the dead man's body. Exactly. My God, don't. Yeah, so I was like, Monet, that's not. <laughs> that's not. I know you need to make some bread, but I don't think that's smart. So, of course, uh, we got Drew goes to confront Kane. And this is when he finds out that Kane 
got little Wop still alive and talking about some of the reason why he's still alive is because he loyal. I was like, he just Ninja, did you just see what they just did to your family? And he almost took out Zeke's knee, what was going to really mess up everything. And y'all had to confront them and he disrespected your aunt. Now all of a sudden he loyal? Your mama. Well, your mama. Now all of a sudden he loyal? Like, what? But Kane's whole thing now is Kane has to create an army yeah. of the toughest people. I guess this guy considered tough in the streets. You know, I, I don't I'm not scared of him. Yeah. But yeah. So but... he has to get like minded people to turn away from who they are loyal to to get them to be loyal to him. Even if he's doing it the wrong way by making them scared or threatening their lives. It's a lot. Yeah. But his main reason of coming over there because he was confronting him about, hey, why did you take Mama Corn Boys? <laughs> And which we saw that coming because... Why didn't Monet see that coming? Yeah, because Kane, as bad as he is, he still can't do this by himself. He still needs some people to help push the weight. But I didn't think that he was going to steal Monet's guys. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, so here's the thing. I just, Monet I throws thought, the shots. He does the work. He's yeah. the muscle. He's the crazy. I thought he was going to build a whole new crew. Like Why Tommy should did. he, though? Why should he though? Like real talk, if we if we're out here, and for instance, and me and you doing some skit together, and me and you fall out, but I'm the person that everybody is connected to in the streets. You just the one that's calling the shots, but I'm the one that they have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that they see. They can call me on the phone. They can't call you. Right. We fall out. I'm taking these dudes with me. But what you got going on? Man, these hoes ain't loyal. Oh, no, not at all. Because <laughs> once we fall out, it's a whole nother go. I'm a Leo to my heart. I'm but, loyal. But that's what we learned, though. You you really learn what people feel about you when you fall out. Not really. You do. Not that's really. when they start talking skit, man. True and not true. But when people fall out, then we in survival mode. Because what you're not going to do is, you're not going to get me before I get you. Which means that when y'all was friends, y'all was building ammunition no, against no, each no. other. So Ammun you fall out. Ammunition comes because of relationship. Yeah. We've sure. been with each other forever. I know your weaknesses, you know mine. But the moment that we fall out and you start taking it there. Now, we don't even have to be there if you don't take it there. But hey, once hey, you start taking hey, it there. Hey, this argument ain't going nowhere. Oh, it's not. <laughs> but once you start taking it there, I'm taking your ninjas off the street. I, I'm just going to put out there is that you find out where people really stand in your life is when y'all not saying You see what I, I, people are capable of. I see what, what you what was what about me in your heart the whole time. I think you talking to me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I could. I could be talking about you. It seemed like you got a little heat over here. <laughs> so we saw last week that Sax wants to interview Epiphany. So him and McLean goes over there. And of course, she's still hood as ever. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, so basically y'all want me to snitch. And it was like, Sax was like, no. We just want you to go on the stand and say how it was to be a customer of Tasha. How was the experience? Um, we need to ask you, did to, was Tariq working there? Yada, yada, yada. The old tricks that Sax does before he get them on the stand. And flip the script. And flip the script. Like I told y'all earlier, mind you, Paula don't know anything about Epiphany. She didn't find out about Epiphany until she went down to talk to Tasha. Because your mama McLean and her was talking to Tasha. And then the the yes. expert witness. I was like, hey, ain't nothing expert about Epiphany. But that was her line. I mean, that was McLean lying to her. Which I still don't understand why he lied about that. Because as greasy as McLean and Paula are together... Paula still has this ethical part of her that wants to do things the right By way. By the book, yeah, true. But in lawyer fashion. Yeah. McLean, he wants to win no matter what. Yeah, he'll do it dirty. And I she's know. always the one that's like, uh, 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 what about, what about? Yeah. So instead of hearing that, he just don't tell her. Yeah. So. And he still don't want to piss her off because he still want to buck her. You know? Gotcha. So, yeah, so that's when Tasha revealed to her... That's how it all came up when they meeting and Tasha 
got her to come back up there and was like, hey, I know what you're going through. I know y'all sleeping together because I did the same thing. I lied for, for, for James. And my question is, what's your payment? What you going to get out of all of this? And then we saw that that's when Paula was like, uh, I'm done with McLean. Yeah, I can't do this. Uh, and she went and told Tariq everything was going on about Epiphany and all this stuff, how everything was going down. So that put Tariq onto Epiphany. And then Tasha was like uh, telling Paula that have to um, go question Tariq about um, Epiphany because I don't know nothing about their relationship if she knew about and that if... Uh, no. Something about Slim. About Slim. If Epiphany is anything like Slim, you need to deal with them the same way we deal with Slim, in which we know that they killed Slim. At so least that's what I remember. But yeah, that's why that way I remember. I'm wrong. I know y'all. Well, no, definitely. Well, that <laughs> so to read, so they over there trying to convince her. So she was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do it." So. Now, Tariq has to go and deal with her. And I'm like, God don't heck Tariq in a situation again where he needs to eliminate somebody that can run their mouth to get him locked up. So he, we see he goes over there to confront Epiphany. And I was like, oh, hell, it's about to go down. Because as much as none of us like Tariq, he has been doing a real good job this year, but I'm I'm really not ready for him to die yet. <laughs> I don't dislike Tariq right now. Like I, 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 I have a, I, I have, I have a love power. hate love hate relationship for him. That's I mean. When his I still ain't alive. forgot about that. Now, oh, I ain't that's forgot. I'm still holding on to the past. What? That's what I'm, I'm still holding on to the past skit that he was doing. That's yeah. That, how easily we forget though. <laughs> yeah. But, if, but the only thing that saved the epiphany was she was like, if I had the money, I would have ran out. I, I, I run. And so Tariq was like, oh, that's what it's going to take. So he ended up paying her. We don't know how much because it didn't show that. But we saw back at court when Sax was expecting for epiphany to come up, he didn't show up. And so this when McLean finds out what she should have already known in the beginning the sacks were screwing him too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I thought that you were in on the fact that he was screwing you. Yeah. And in return, you were screwing him too. Yeah. But you really had taken your eye off, off of him. him. Yeah. Like, I'm no, so confused record, man. with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I gave McLean too much credit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we knew the deal was, the whole deal, the original deal was to get Tasha off so that they both could look good for their boss. But, of course, Steve Ott, his boss, changed everything because Steve Ott wanted to take down Tasha. So, that's why Sax is doing what he's doing. So, I, yeah. Uh, I, like we said a long time ago, Sax should have been dead. Should have been dead. And I'm sick of him. I'm yeah. really am sick of him. Sick of him. So, uh, so with Tariq getting these drugs, let's, let's, let's go back over there getting this cocaine. He talks to Brayden, and Brayden was like, uh, we need to get Effie to help. I was like, yeah, are we going to bring Effie back to the scene? Mm -hmm. And Effie mad with Tariq right yeah, now. Yeah, Effie mad. So, of course, Brayden is still mad about all the whole deal. And Tariq finally told him the truth that she drugged him and all that stuff. And, you know, and he don't want to hear that. He don't want to hear that. He don't believe it. But uh, they end up meeting up with Effie, and Effie agreed to, to buy the product from them. And, uh, but... I already knew it, but you really see Effie and Tariq had this weird connection. So even though each of them fucked each other, it's like I still can see them two together. I can see and them see them working them. together. But I don't know if they will be able to trust each other because if it all came they down decided. to it, they're going to stick it to each other in order to win the game. <laughs> but I like what Effie told Tariq. See, because the episode is called Monster. Yeah. And it all boils down to... What you have created a person to be is yeah. now what we have to deal with in front of us. And they were talking about it in the class and whatnot. I'm talking about Frankenstein. And yeah. What if Frankenstein wasn't bad? What if it was that his his master, his creator made him, made that, him that way? way. Yeah. So now we have Tariq trying to figure out who he is. And he's telling everybody, I might do some bad things, but I'm not a monster. Yeah. So he told Effie, he was like, I have to do things, but I'm not a monster. And she said, you know what? You are a monster. Yeah. And as soon as you 
you own up, own up to that to yeah. who you are the easier it'll be for you to yeah. move in this life i know who i am yeah and once i know who i am, knew who i was i can live with the decisions and the choices that i make exactly. and i'm like <laughs> you just made a whole lot of sense in this <laughs> but Tariq is still not trying to see himself as a monster, monster. yeah and I'm like, you may not be a monster monster, but you a baby monster. Yeah. You're a monster in the making. So you a monster ink. What was that? Was that <laughs> monster ink? <laughs> so finally, like what I told y'all, I said when Monique really put all the dots together and know that Professor Milgram is sleeping with Zeke, she coming for her. But we learned this episode that... I gave them too much credit too because I yeah, thought she knew. That Professor Ingram was, used to be a prosecutor. We probably knew that, but for I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I just know from this episode she's a prosecutor, so that's why she was like, "Let's interview all the students anonymously." I forgot to tell that. Yeah, so yeah, but anyway, so she comes back to the office and Monet is waiting on like, "I know you fucking Zeke, and I know that you on this little investigation stuff about what happened at the pool and everything. You better open your mouth up and say nothing, or I'm gonna blow up your spot." I said, oh. Yeah. But, once again, the business was chosen over family. Because you got this professor sleeping with your goddamn son. And you know what's happening. Nephew. Now, we're a nephew. And you know what's happening. But you made a move for the business and not a move for Zeke's education. Or am I or wrong? Or him as a person. Yeah. Because I would have thought that she would have been like, today is the last day. That you sleep with my that you No, but she didn't say, I don't remember, I don't remember her saying that. No, she didn't say you better. It was more of, don't buck with my family's yeah. business. So the, the threat was, don't you open your mouth nothing about what happened um, with that pool killer. Nothing. Not, no, 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 don't, don't mess with Zeke no more. But that. I don't know. It works like that in some families too. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, we saw the scene where Monet and them were at the bar waiting for Rico because this time Rico was coming through personally. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that boy. Yeah. To, uh, to drop off the product. So, when they were sitting in the bar waiting and it was like, because your mama Tariq had came in and he came in and told Monet, I'm sorry that I had to use your money to help out my mom." And of course, you know in the streets when you mess with the with the drug money, that's your head. Your A is gone. It's, I mean, ain't no splint. You don't you don't mess with the paper. So immediately, Monet pulls out a gun on him, and Drew and Diana was begging like, "Mom, please." He got family out there. He got you know yada yada. And it's like they don't care about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so right when I thought Monet was gonna take um Tariq out, which we all know. That she can't even afford to do that because she ain't got the boys on the street no more. So her all, the whole money is dependent upon Tariq. So you can take him out. So before then, um, Drew was like, why is they waiting out there so long? Then but before then, Tariq was like, you know what? Go ahead and do what you got to do. I know the consequences, yeah. I have to space these consequences. Yes. And then we had a flashback and I said, Tariq really has done a lot of skit. Yeah, he done done a lot. And he was like... I get it now. Everyone that I'm close to and everybody that I love, I hurt. Yep. I get it now. So do what you got to do. And that's when Drew was like, why are they just sitting there Why are they like just that? sitting there like that? Yep. And then, boom. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. But remember, we saw Kane, uh, Lil Wop had brought in their product. He was like, you got product already? He was like, yeah, you know. And that's when we saw when he had uh, pulled the product out the box. And Kane was like, this is Monet's product. Y'all trying to take Monet off the street. And Little Watt was like, ain't that what you wanted? Yeah, and he was like, I didn't do this. <clears throat> this is what was given to me. So immediately Kane he knew them. So and he Kane tried to rush down and tried to get up out there because he yeah. knew that they were going to go and try to just take Monet. They don't need him no more. Yep. And then, of course, Drew, being the cat that he is, you don't mess with family trying to do something to save them. He got up that was right in the middle of them shooting, blasting up the place, and he got shot. I said, why would you do that? Yeah, I'm like, look, look, 
in movie fashion, they're just shooting at the windows. Yeah. I'm like, so your gun doesn't aim down so you can shoot the floor that you yeah. know that the people are on? Like, I'm like, real talk. I mean, that Streets 101, spray from top to bottom. They just right here. Uh-huh. You telling about the game you was in. Uh-huh. How you know that? <laughs> you know that. I told you I know people that know people that put in that work. Uh-huh. For people that don't want to uh-huh. put in that work. I see. So they end up going to the hospital. No, no, no. Let me back up. Because right after Drew had got shot, that's when Kane had showed up. And he was like, uh, what did he say? I don't know what, well, he, he, was, said, what he said. But she but, said, but, why weren't you here? Why weren't and you I'm here? Like, and I was like, but you kicked him out. I was like, that's a mind buck. Yeah, you kicked him out. And then immediately she pulls the gun out on him, asking, asking him, he was saying, why are you here? It's like, oh, okay. So, yeah, she is really done with him. You know, you pull a gun out and put it to your son's head. And so she they did. was at down at the hospital. And oh, she it, told him, say, so you put him in the car and you take him to, to the, the hospital. hospital. Yeah, so right on the outside of the hospital. And this one kind of when it really got real. And I guess he was thought he could work his way back into the family from. I did. To, because he said, because uh, cause he did show up and kind of help out a little bit. But she was like, no, I need you to run out of here before I deal with you myself. I was <laughs> like, and he was like, but Ma, but Ma you the one that made me this way. And that's what we said last week. You was the one that created Cain. You created that monster. Yeah, you created him. And now, and you now can't... the monster is roaring at you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what ended up happening, man. So I still yeah. got a soft spot for Kane, though. Yeah, because of that regard, Me too. is that you created him this way. Mm-hmm. He made like he's made a lot of mistakes, but yeah, he made one mistake that made you just turn your entire existence against your son. Yeah, and then you taking this dude. Yeah, Tariq is proving himself to come through in a clutch, but you don't know him like that. Yeah. That's your son. That's your blood. You know how he moves. Mm-hmm. And you know that if he is loyal to you, he is loyal. loyal to you. Exactly. So why can't you reel that back in and have that that you trust? Yeah. It's, it's just crazy to me. Yeah, because like you brought a good point with Tariq taking her money. And she, you could tell that she wasn't play pimping, but you could tell she wasn't serious about dealing with Tariq. As she was with dealing with Kane. Yeah, that's yeah, your it was son. A, yeah, it was a little bit more, a little bit more toned down. It was like I still need to deal with you on what you did right here. Yeah. So. But she still don't scare me though. No, no. Even with a gun in her hand up to his head, I'm like, you ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, that's Mary J. That's why. I, that's what you. That's what you see. You, I like, was you, just you don't see that. You don't see no. You don't see no more now. <laughs> Even when she walked away from him at the hospital, I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, we saw Kane get on the phone and call somebody like, I need your help. And I was like, who the hell is this? It was from Maria, Maria, Ramirez. I always get his name all jacked up. So, they met up and put him up. Maria, 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 yeah, Maria, the yeah, cop. Yeah. The <laughs> cop told her, told Kane was pretty much, hey, we don't even need you no more now. I mean, I said, it's like, whoa. He was like, Monet's done with you. Monet's done with you. Which means that I'm done with you. And so he pulls a gun out on Kane, then tries to walk away like he the skit. And I and like you gonna turn your back on on Kane, the monster? You gonna turn your back on him? <laughs> and immediately, pop! And he was like, No, please don't this it's, this is gonna make it hard with Monet. You ain't gonna never get back in the family. Da, 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 da. He said it's already, already done. done. Pow! You you know you can't negotiate with Kane. But here's the thing. Now, Kane has really created a kerfuffle. Yeah. Because the only person that stands in between Monet and the court system, jail, all of this, the legal system, is this dude cleaning yeah. and intervening every yep. time something's going. If the cops are on the way to do something with you, he's the person that lets you know, hey, hey, hey they about to come down there and look at you. Yeah. They about to do this. Move differently. The street's hot. Move. Now they don't have that no more. But we know. But that's not we, Kane's we, problem. Yeah. No, nah, but we know the streets fashion is all she gotta do is call Lorenzo, and somebody else will be on the job. But just that Lorenzo didn't know that <laughs> that she was fucking him down. 
<laughs> so is that now going to come out and Lorenzo's going to be like, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. So at the end, of course, the reek is oh, in this. And then who's going to, they're going to investigate this cop turning up dead. Yep. And hopefully no cameras is out there where they was at. But who knows? In power sense, there probably was some cameras out there. <laughs> there was a whole person taking the picture. Or somebody was taking a video, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we see at the end that, of course, since Tariq's back is up against the wall, uh, he calls Tamika. Thank God. Hey, so Tamika was like, give me a dollar. I said, there you go. So now I am officially your lawyer. Her first question was Tariq, did you kill your father? And he was like, yes, I did. But I'm not a monster. But I'm not a monster. And I killed him because he yes. was a monster. And Tamika said. I, I totally know. agree. I know that. Yeah, slide. S season one. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm trying to uh, figure out. So when Tariq gets to court and admit that he killed his yes. daddy. How is this going to go? How is this going to pan out? Because I think he's going to get some jail time. But is it going to flip where, because Tasha been covering for him too. So is that going to come into play? Is Saxton going to kind of use that angle? Well, he did it, but she been hiding it. So she's an accomplice. 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 I said accomplice. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all fuck the words up. Yeah. So how, that, yeah, how is that? And so next week is going to be the this, this season finale. So we know. Of this book. Of this book. So hopefully, I'm hoping that they will close out this book and let this end so we can go into the next book afresh. But I don't know. I, I, I'm really interested how it's going to turn out. At this yeah, show. I'm still thinking of all the angles. Like, yeah. And the crazy thing about it is as much as to read, isn't this how, it, how life works? You try to live your life and be different than that that you despise. And you end up being exactly, exactly like that. Exactly the same, yep. Like, Tariq despises how his father worked and moved and how he was. Just to be yeah. your father. Be your father. What they say in the law of attraction. Whatever you resist, always persists. I said it right? I don't know. Persists. I said it right? No. In other words, whatever you focus <laughs> on, that's what's always going to be showing up in your life. Straight from the VA. <laughs> the dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla.